it is with huge appreciation that we have Steve here. The last time Steve was here, he said to us, you have to go to two meetings. You're going to have to go to two meetings. That's the last time Steve was here. So it is brilliant to have him back. I want to also say this. He has been an immense source of encouragement and stimulation and challenge uh, for us as leaders, particularly the elders. I mean, it's been, um, even today, challenging yet again. But um, he's just very much a part of what we do here. He is very much for us, and we are so grateful that he's helped us in growing and leading this church. So can we, can we really give him a king's welcome here tonight? I have to say one other thing, actually. He runs the best leadership course I have ever been on in my entire life, secular, Christian, whatever, the best leadership course. It was absolutely brilliant. It was eye-opening. I thought I'd never seen a leader lead and open up a leadership course like he does, and he regularly does it. Do you recognize yourself, Steve? No, not really. Okay. Um, Steve, just a... Let's just find a little bit about you. So just tell us how you, your bit of your background, how you became a Christian. We've got about 30 minutes, Steve, so max. Um, so let loose. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much for so, so many nice words, Neil. <laughs> what a nice pastor. Um, it's fantastic uh, to be with you and uh, well done for really worshipping God. This evening, I really sense God with you, and uh, I wasn't too sure about the Irish number, but apart from that, I thought it was a really good time of worship. But no, seriously, that, that was a joke, by the way. Didn't want to offend the worship leaders, okay? Especially if you're Irish here, I love you. Jesus does as well, and you know, oh dear, I, I was going to try and behave tonight, Neil, but I can see that uh, we're going to struggle. So, what was the question? That's right. Okay, so I was. Um, I was brought up in a Christian family. My parents, uh, a godly example. My dad is, uh, uh, he's 80 next year. He's on fire for God. He's just handed over uh, a major building project in the church he attends. And he also was the church administrator. He's been an elder and done all that and been full time. And I talked to my mum and dad the other day, and they said, um, oh, we handed that all over, but we decided to start a new ministry. I'm thinking, Dad, you're 80. So we, we're a bit worried about the 55-year-olds. So we're going to start an outreach. For, we're pretending, we're going to tell everyone who's about that age in the church it's for them, but really, we're about reaching people outside, you see. So they're off. So that's my kind of, that's my heritage. And so I grew up, my dad is an outstanding leader. He probably, I could say, he fathered me in Christ. And, uh, but I was a bit of a rebel. I was a bit cool when I was a teenager. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. I know some of you who are younger here think I don't look cool, but I was once. And, um, well, I thought I was anyway. I, used to, I was at school. I used to have my collar up. Uh, and if, you, if, if you're in your early 50s, you know how cool that was, I tell you. Uh, I, uh, I left school, I was a bit of a, I didn't do very well at school, Neil. I left school with no exams, uh, I've failed everything. Uh, I think education has its value, by the way, don't want to offend <laughs> any of you teachers here, you know, I know Christians are predominantly teachers, it seems to me, or, or nurses, but, um, and uh, where was I, and then, that's right, I left school at 16, bit of a... Um, uh, did an apprenticeship on uh, on the in the printing industry actually just uh, studied at Watford College uh, but got saved at nineteen through a death of uh, a very tragic death of a friend of mine on a motorbike accident and I remember I was a back row attender at church I, I went for the girls when before I became a Christian I was just th- I just thought let's go there's some nice <laughs> nice girls there uh, it's the truth. I mean, I tell, I have three sons, and if they say a good, if they say a good looking girl, I just say that's good eyesight. That's what I say. Um, uh, and then I sort of bring some boundaries to it just to reassure some of you. Um, but I was a back of the row kind of church attender. 
and I went to the funeral of a friend called Nick who died on a motorbike accident and I was on the back row and I said to God, I'll give you a chance. And I think that's a very arrogant thing now. I understand it, that's an arrogant thing, but uh, God's big hearted, yeah? And uh, uh, man, he, he would take a chance. So I investigated Christianity seriously for nine months. I thought if I'm going to give my life to something, I want to know what I'm signing up for. I got personally convinced that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. That was the deal changer for me. And that was it. I'm in. And so, I mean, if he's raised from the dead, I don't do Luke. Have you ever met any kind of sort of lukewarm Christians? They're kind of Christians, but they're not that happy about it. And I just, come on. If he's raised from the dead, it's a complete game changer. doesn't mean life's going to be easy. That, that's a different issue. That requires pastoral care and sensitivity and empathy, okay? However, but <laughs> if we're just talking about biblical truth here for a moment, if Jesus is raised from the dead, it's a game changer. It should radically impact your life, and it did radically impact my life. So, Steve, how did you get into leadership, church leadership? What, 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 what sort of uh, propelled you in? Well, I think the uh, first thing I was I got saved at 19. I got asked to open and close the doors in the church and to lead the tear craft store. So that's where I started. I um, then took on leading a group and leading a bit of worship. And I thought, if I've got a group, I want to grow it. So I, was, so, so I didn't want to just gather a group of Christians. I mean, God, how boring is that? I thought to myself, we're going to do something. So I, I actually multiplied these groups and we just, then we started hiring pubs and I ran an alcohol free bar for young people. I just thought, let's get out there and try and reach some people for Jesus. Um, I, after finishing my apprenticeship, I went into business. I actually did quite well. I worked for a company, uh, a part of the Siemens group and I was in sales and marketing and I, <laughs> I was dry. I bought my first house when I was 21 and every, all my friends were still at university. <laughs> Um, and uh, um, paying for the, well they weren't paying for their student debt but anyway it's different nowadays you need to go to university all my sons are going to university it was a different era so don't mishear me if you're 17 and you know, I'm in trouble with the Irish and the parents now and the teachers and any nurse in the room uh, I've grown a church through offending people Neil I found that works um, and so then what happened was I went um, to uh, yeah I, I, I went into business and I, I learned a lot in um, in business, that really has helped me uh, in leading a growing church. I did that till I was about 26, 27. Then I, I became a youth pastor in the church that I'd grown up in Bedford. Yeah. So from there, you you got you went to Catford, didn't you? Yeah. You moved to Catford. Is that Catford or Lewisham? I've never, or is it in the borough of Lewisham? Is it, how does that work? We moved to Catford, which is in the borough of Lewisham. Okay. And uh, I think. <laughs> So you got you, a, you're from Lewisham? Catford, really? Where do you live? All oh, right, Lee. Did you? That's fantastic. Well, you know, when you're ever over, pop in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. um, that'll help the Sunday numbers. Well, that's, yeah, that's okay. really nice. And, uh, uh, and you've got a fan. Yeah. Without well, offending anybody. Yeah, Very I was good, say, Steve. That's, that's, so anyway, you went to. Where were we? This, you were in this. You were somehow you got to this church. You were going to lead this church in Catford, yeah. and I mean, uh, I'd, I'd grown up in a provincial town called Bedford. I'd got saved and um, got married there to a beautiful girl called Deb, and we'd had our first two children. Ben was three at that point, and uh, Josh was six months, and I, I, I felt. Um, that, um, oh, this could offend everyone in the room, I just realized. But I felt if we were really going to take the nation for Jesus, we had to go to the major urban centers. And I did some analysis, because that's the way I'm wired. Like, uh, like High Wycombe? Well, High Wycombe is kind of on the edge of London. Okay. Let's put it that way. Okay. I worked out, a th- I think it was a third of the population lived in five cities. Uh, London, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Newcastle, something like that. And I thought, well, my generation has to move to the urban centres if we're really going to reach the nation. And I'd grown up, my parents come from South London. I supported Crystal Palace. I still do. 
I thought they've done ra- rather well this season, by the way. And, um, and so I ended up moving back to a church. I, I went to a church that was really struggling. It had gone from about 300 people to 150 in the decade before I got there. It, the two pastors, one had had an emotional breakdown, the other one had just resigned. Um, when it rained in the building we had, uh, water used to just literally <laughs> come through the roof. One of the jobs of the elders was to take the bucket around. When I got there, we started with about 150 people, and after the first song, 80% of the congregation would sit down. It was a hurting church. And we moved into Lewisham is, you know, my kids have grown up as going to school as a minority. My next-door neighbor is Caribbean. My other next-door neighbor is uh, Muslim with the whole... It's very diverse, uh, Burka and things. And so it was very different. I mean, for the first five years, I was just scared. Uh, <laughs> so I thought, get to my car. You know, it took me a while to get used to urban life. So it was so different. You know, think provincial town, 100,000 into a uh, 10 million city. There was no grass verges. That's what I noticed. There's no grass verges in Catford. It's pavement everywhere. Uh, and, uh, but God called us there, and we went to serve this church. Now, um, my conversations with you, you speak very highly of a guy called Steve Nicholson. Yeah. And um, he came on a weekend or a yeah. or week or whatever and just really spoke into the life of the church prophetic. Yeah. Could you, do you want to just run yeah. that? Yeah, Steve Nicholson is a dear friend and is a mentor, really. It, it, God's gracious, isn't he? He brings leaders who are way ahead of you, uh, kind of in and across your path and if you if God provides that it's a, it's a massive blessing and so Steve Nicholson was was still is as part of the vineyard movements he leads a church in Chicago he's responsible for the planting of over 700 churches in the states for the vineyard he grew up under John Wimber's ministry so uh, he was leading a church of about 100 he joined the vineyard it went through a thousand and I was fortunate enough to get to know him and call him a friend And four weeks after moving to Catford, he came with a a prophetic team and they brought a prophetic word in a a kind of leaders meeting of about 10 people around someone's house about looking in the history of the church. There's a vision in the history. And I did that, discovered that the plant, uh, the Catford Hill building that we, we, which was where the water came in, was... um, it was originally planted by C.H. Spurgeon, that was C.H. Spurgeon's ministry, by a 22-year-old pastor. And when they started the church, it was originally with a vision for a 1,000. And that's where our, the prophetic word for building a church for a 1,000 came from. Uh, quite a remarkable evening of prophetic revelation. It's good to have God's word. I mean, a lot of people want to see their, you know, a church grow. I think that's, that's a good, good thing to you know, believe God for. But when you've got a word from God... Uh, now, I have to confess, when I shared this with the church, they weren't that enthusiastic. And one person said, you'll never see that. Uh, <laughs> people are great, aren't they? You know? uh, and it, I mean, we, I didn't share it with the church for a couple of years, but I think an, an important directional prophetic word needs weighing. And, um, but I, I felt God had spoken to us, and so we shared a vision of going for a thousand. And if you, if you think back for us, four weeks in... The difference between the prophetic promise and reality was huge. Uh, I was 32. Uh, I, I'd been well prepared in a good church in Bedford. But what did I know? And we set out on a journey of trying to fulfill God's word, that vision. So, yeah, that's what happened. What, what were sort of key factors for you then? Because you, you've... I'm just going way forward now. Steve leads a church 1,400 in uh, over three sites and multi-site and but along the journey how did you what, what were sort of were there sort of pivotal moments or I mean because when you came here you said first thing you said is you got too many people in this place <laughs> and I said to you I, I know Steve that's why you're here and he said there's no room for people to sit down I said I know Steve that's why you're here <laughs> and that was the whole um multi-meeting yeah. Yeah. thing. I mean, I think, oh gosh, it's, I mean, how, how, you should buy the book. That, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 
Okay, that that's an advertisement, by the way. Oh, yeah. so is, out, there, is there now, some over there? There are some oh, over there, there no, and uh, it's good to grow, and um, so they're for a fiver. For a so fiver. That's, is that cheap, by the way? That, I'm giving them away. I can't get rid of them. Okay, I can't get rid of them. I'm so, getting desperate. So, and well, we've done a plug. I, th- you. I think, I think oh, well, for me... Just, just on the book, by the way, one guy read this book and then, and then bought... Uh, about, I think he bought about seven or eight copies and gave it all to his leadership team. He said, read this. So um, they were very encouraged with that. Thank so you. Thank it you. Is read. It's a thank good you, read. Thank you. Thank um, you. That's my marketing background. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, I think it's difficult, isn't it, to summarize what we 20 years. This September would be 20 years. One of my favorite leadership quotes is by a guy called Jim Collins, which is overnight success takes 20 years. Yeah, Overnight success takes 20 years. So if you want to raise children that are going to follow God, that are stable, contributors, taking responsibility, it's 20 years' work. Yeah, If you want to build a career, yeah, you don't do it overnight. If you want to accumulate resources to bless the kingdom, and go on nice holidays takes 20 years, yeah? Um, if you want to build a church, uh, it's, it's long-term, faithful, step-by-step. Step. There come moments when you have to make big jumps of faith if you really want to keep growing. Um, we've done, I don't know, I've lost count. So I could give you a few if you want, but... Uh, so uh, we went for a th- we felt God speak go to a th- for a thousand about two hundred of us we went for a two million pound building project probably not unlike the original founders of getting into this I would guess um, I mean it's only money so I'm just a bit naive well actually I'm not naive I'm astute financially but I believe God for resources if He has spoken so we just went in, we just double tithed for th- three years. I mean, you could raise a million and a half in three years if everyone in the room double tithed. I mean, you think what you could do with that? Um, so Steve, that was, it's gone quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it goes quiet. I mean, I haven't gone for an appeal yet, so we're all right. So um, that was a big step. We moved back in. I mean, the church grew from two to three hundred in five years, from three to five hundred in five years, and from five hundred to a thousand in another five years. And now it's getting up to about another five years, about another 500. So it's about 15. So that's, so I believed for 10% growth each year. I thought I can believe for that. Uh, you double a church in every seven years if you do that. So you start with 200 and you become 400, you become 800, you become 1600 and you get invited for interviews. But all it is, is, is simple. And we have... Um, yeah, well, that was a big step. We then, to go to two meetings was a big step in 20, 2005 because we'd got very comfortable with one meeting. We went to three in 2008 and then by 2009, yeah, we were full. Everything is rammed. And then in the middle of the downturn, this was, this was, this was a big call. We, we found a building that, uh, cost three and a half million pounds and um, and you kind of think well I could I could kind of probably I could write a book and travel a bit yeah on a church from going to 200 to a thousand yeah I was in fact I was I was, I was writing a book and I was traveling a bit and uh, but there's a lot of people that need to hear about Jesus it really is I mean, there are thousands and thousands of people where I live that need to hear about Jesus. And a bit like a family as it grows, you know, when we had a third, we had to, you know, needed another room at home and we needed a bigger car to get a people carrier. I still have a people carrier. I used to have a BMW when I was in business. I'd like a BMW, but I have a people carrier. Yeah, it's not cool. It's very practical and relevant. And does well when we're going holiday and things like that. So I need space to get the kids in. I've got a family. I've got to look after them. And I, I'm about building a big family for Jesus. And I want to reach people for Jesus. 
So you just think you've got to go for it. So we, we went, we, we, um, we bought this uh, building and it cost us three and a half million in the middle of the downturn. So I'm leading a church in London where people do not know, as you remember, 2008, eight nine whether they're going to have a job in 12 months' time. And also, there's no money anywhere. And I, I go to the banks, and my, I, my opening line was, I am a pastor, I'd like to borrow four million. <laughs> and, you know, you've got to be able to add up in front of a banker to kind of convince them. In the end, we had got three offers, and we bought this building. It's 65,000 square feet, and another church wanted to join us, so that came in as well. Um, and so we now have three sites and six meetings on a Sunday. If you're preaching, you preach four times and you jump in a car and travel around. Uh, and you're videoed so it can be showed a week later. Um, we are just about to... Uh, we've got our debt down to about, um, about two million, but we're just about to refinance about another million. And uh, why? Because we want to resource both our pastoral team and administrative team so that we can get to a fourth meeting on the Catford site, launch a fourth site, extend the Catford site some more, and do all work on the lease site, including move our offices across. And people go, why do you do that? I do that because I want to reach people for Jesus. I want to reach people for Jesus like... Like, like it's really important. <laughs> and I live with it and I burn with it. And I'm, I sometimes think I'm an evangelist. I said that to you the first time I met yeah, you. I just thought. Um, and so I'm preaching on Sunday and I'm preaching out of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 about the ministry and message of reconciliation. Yeah. We have the ministry, yeah, we, to appeal on Christ's behalf. And our message is that you can recon- be reconciled to God. I will preach that with passion. And I will have, and, and we see people saved every week. So just saying to people, wondering, have you grown this church? Is it? I said, well, yeah, we have loads of Christians joining us. In fact, you can live in High Wycombe and come and visit your mum and come in down to Catford. We won't turn anyone away, but we will look to see people saved all the time. So I, have a, you can, I can sense it in myself now. I have a burning passion. And the other thing we learned was that you've got to have a prophetic vision. You've got to have a philosophy, a way of that you work out your core values, which for us is invitational and provide a next step. Very simple. Invite a friend, provide a next step. And then create space. So we do, I think we're going to do 11 carol services this year. Okay? Okay? Could you just say that again, Steve? We're going to do, we're, we're planning 11. Uh, we'll do them over a Sunday and then the next weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We will look, we're going for three and a half to 4,000 people in the room. I always think you'd never do enough Christmas and you never do enough Easter here. You just, just, you should, I don't know. How many carol services did you do, Neil? We did three. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, no, we I mean, I'm encouraged. One, that's good. We well, well done. Well done. Um, um, <laughs> you know, come on. You know, what a joy. So I get up. And the other you. year, I said, he said, how many carol services did you do? I said, two, Steve. And there was this sort of disappointed look. You know, you know how people do that to you? He does it really well. And he's disappointed. You mean you're not going for another one? I said, I, you know, the resources, Steve, it's really, you know, it's hard, you know. He said, oh, come on, Neil, come on. So we've done three. I, I, I feel to gear back a bit and say, <laughs> well done, excellent. <laughs> uh, so why, why do, I mean, I'm exhausted by the end of that. But why wouldn't you want to kind of pour yourself out to share Jesus at a time when people will come? Uh, and uh, we do about 10 at Easter. Uh, and uh, oh, and we're doing, remember, we're doing six meetings every week. And we're planning another site and another meeting. 
Yeah. I say to my team, if you want to serve on this team, I want you to know it's pretty intense around here. You know, I hope you're, uh, you're, you're up for it. <laughs> you're up for it. I mean, we, we, I, how much time have I got left? About two minutes, yeah? Just a little bit more. Yeah. Just about five. Okay. I think you could go quicker. I think I've seen that you've grown by over 10% in the last year. That is phenomenal. Well done. That's a lot of people. Um, I th- I, can I say this without offending anyone? You know, I love Jesus and I love God's church, okay? But you need to create more space in this auditorium. And the platform is so large. It's like, we got, I mean, it's just... So space, we found space really important. Not for us that come all the time, we, we know it, but for new people. And you have to think the new person all the time. I would probably, <laughs> probably, I, I, I'd like to... I knew this was a dangerous uh, moment. Uh, I, I, I'd probably... Can we just cut, uh, no, just go I, I'd probably do something with this auditorium a little, in the sense of uh, uh, look and feel. Just, just, just an idea, and you know, friends, look, we we could raise a quarter of a million tonight if we had to, in the room. Oh, could. I mean, Kings is you're not dissimilar. It, you know, we're not. It's not. We're not all richer. In fact, probably where I am is a lot poorer, and there's probably one or two richer, but probably not vastly different. And we are, we're raising 400000 a year just to the building project. And we're doing this, we're on our, well, we started in 2009, so that is six years. So we've done that more in the first few years. I know from your figures, because I, I'm quite good with figures, did I tell you that? Um, yes, you did. That you're, about, you're, church, you're a church of about half the size and your giving is about half our giving. So in the right context, with the right vision, because I, I think you all love Jesus and you want to see other people come to Christ, you could release huge amounts of resources into the kingdom. And I found that if you cast a big vision and you say, look, we're going to go for it for Jesus, like, come on, we've only got one life, let's live it, that I find that people will happily give sacrificially. Uh, because they're, they're thinking now, we're thinking, we're thinking legacy. We're not even thinking one generation. We're thinking what we're doing is we're going we're gonna to leave an imprint on uh, South East London that's going to run for a few, few years. So we're, we're thinking like that. So, um, but, hey, what do I know? But, you know, if, if, you, if, 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 if you think it's for Jesus, uh, I happily, we've double tithed for you. For years, I mean, because it's just, it's, I gave up a really high-powered job and well-paid. I took a 80% drop in salary when I went full-time. So I was on 20% of what I was on, and I lost my BMW and I got my mum's Fiesta S. It had 80000 on it. It was so old, you had to lean forward going up hills, honestly. <laughs> because, so the money thing, I kind of died to that years ago. It was just like, I'm done there. So it just, so, uh, yeah. I, um, <laughs> do you know, Steve, I think it's, it's worth having you just to hear your faith. I just love your faith, and I love your heart. For the unsaved. Mm. I mean, if we can't catch that, what on earth are we about? And I, I love that. I really do appreciate that. Um, you know, we're going to draw to because I, I just want to tell you, this has not been out without cost. You can't do the stuff that Steve does without personal cost, family cost. I mean, it's it's huge, isn't it, Steve? And and yet. They're really with you in the whole journey. 
groups? Yeah, my, unfortunately, my three boys all going on with God. Ben's 22, he's just got married. I'm very proud of him taking responsibility as a young guy. Uh, Josh has got an outstanding young lady. Uh, uh, she's South African, but we, we like her anyway, so we're okay. <laughs> so it's good. So that's another group you'll have to apologize to. I, I lead that's a very diverse church. So you know, I lead a very diverse church, so I offend everyone all the time. And uh, uh, yeah, Sam's 15 and is doing well. And Deb is the love of my life. I'd much prefer to be with her tonight than here, uh, to be honest. But you do meet some pastors that just want to do ministry, basically. And they, <laughs> they you know, just think it's all work, work, work. I mean,. Um, and so we've been very much in it together. Uh, but I think I've, you know, been able to catch my kids up in, in, yeah. in, the, in the, the vision of it. And, of course, they've grown up in a church that's just continued to grow. So it's a ball. Um, but, no, it's not without personal cost. And, uh, okay. yeah, you're right. Um, well, we're going to just hold it this moment. Steve, um, I would like you to pray for us. And then I would like us to pray for you. Okay? So... Can we stand and, guys, can we stand? And I want, to, I want us to catch the heart and faith of Steve. I love what he's done. He could be, he could do an hour and a half. You do realize that, don't you? So, um, but pray for us, Steve, and then we'll pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. If I was in my own church and I feel very at home, I'd ask people just to lift their hands at this moment. Can I do that? So if you just want to, you don't have to, but if you'd like to just say, I'm open to God. Let's come before the Almighty. I feel to pray a prayer of thanksgiving for all that you have seen. And then just to pray for a, a mighty acceleration and outpouring of gospel breakthrough. So let's, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this church. God, uh, it's a great church. It's got great committed leaders. They're passionate for you. They're passionate for the lost. Lord, just sensing your presence as we worshipped, as we kind of sense your presence and you speaking to us. We are very grateful, God, for everything that we have seen. I thank you, God, for the pioneers that have built in here for decades I thank you for those that have paid the cost of adjusting to growth and more meetings not seeing people that they used to and all those challenges that come with gospel and growth and Lord if we won't see anything else we, 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 we're grateful that Jesus has saved us hallelujah and uh, but Lord you have uh, given us the ministry and the message of the gospel and so I want to pray for this church I want to pray for this church that it will continue to reach people for Jesus come oh God and we see more and more reconciled to you I want to pray God for I pray very quickly that two meetings will not be enough I pray for other sites other meetings I pray for these type of pastoral challenges, how do we fit everyone in? I pray for four carol services. I pray for three or four Easter services. I pray for uh, baptisms where there's only standing room. I pray, why God? Because uh, High Wycombe and the regions beyond need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we ask you, Holy Spirit, won't you pour out upon this people that they would uh, catch a vision. Uh, God, this great commission you've given us to proclaim Jesus. I pray for every resource. I pray for remarkable financial resource. I pray for faith, not for tens. I feel God say it's not a season of tens. It's a season of hundreds. You must just completely, you need a, it's as if you need a complete mind shift in what church life can and could be and uh, I pray for uh, I pray for hundreds of people and hundreds of thousands of pounds that will be released into your kingdom and into the uh, ongoing uh, prospering of uh, this 
church. I ask you, God, for it, to your glory, and for your name's sake. Amen. Amen.